With a detour in the Middle Ages and a visit with the resurrected serial killer, it's time to become possessed by the tangled timeline of the Exorcist. During World War II in Nazi-occupied Holland, Father Lancaster Marin endures a horrific event that shakes his belief in God. A group of Nazi soldiers have rounded up the citizens of a small town where Marin is serving as a parish priest, and they're demanding justice for the murder of one of their own. The commanding Nazi officer forces Marin to make a terrible decision. Choose ten villagers to die, or the soldiers will kill everyone in town. Marin prays to God for guidance, only for the officer to declare, God isn't here today. When Father Marin realizes that praying won't help him, he reluctantly picks the ten villagers to be executed in front of the whole town. Because of the complicated story behind the production of an Exorcist prequel, this scene plays out twice in two separate films, 2004's Exorcist The Beginning and 2005's Dominion prequel to The Exorcist. It's depicted more tragically in the beginning, as it features the brutal murder of a young girl to demonstrate the Nazis' callousness. Still, both versions are incredibly difficult to watch, and definitely not for the faint of heart. In Dominion, prequel to The Exorcist, Father Marin is working as an archaeologist, having renounced his Catholic faith following his tragic experience in the Netherlands. His latest assignment takes him to a small village in British Kenya, where a Byzantine church has been discovered. It was constructed well before the earliest known presence of Christianity in the area. Marin meets a young, enthusiastic missionary named Father Francis and Major Granville, a British military officer in charge of the site. The excavated church is highly unusual, especially because it covers a hidden passageway that may have housed an ancient evil. Now that the church's catacomb has been unearthed, all hell breaks loose in the nearby village. First, two British soldiers are found one morning in a sacrificial manner after trying to steal from the church. This prompts Granville to accuse the locals of committing the murders and remorselessly kill one of them before shooting himself out of guilt. Then one of the villagers falls into a fit of rage and murders the children at the mission school. After several other grisly and unexplainable events, Marin is forced to reignite his own faith and perform an exorcism in the crypt below the church. Despite considerable temptation, he's ultimately successful and returns to his life as a Catholic priest. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, absolve Exorcist The Beginning was the result of extensive reshoots in the project that started as Dominion. It features a faithless Father Marin being hired by an antiquities collector to go to an archaeological dig in British Kenya to retrieve an artifact of the demon Pazuzu. Joined by Father Francis and local guide Chuma, Marin investigates the subject of the site, an ancient church built far earlier than Christianity is believed to have reached the region. He notices that its statues depict angels who look as if they're trying to prevent something from escaping the pagan temple beneath the church. The surrounding area is then afflicted by disturbing occurrences. One of the site's diggers is struck by a seizure, the church is desecrated when its Christ statue is inverted, the site's lead archaeologist loses his mind, and a young boy is brutally slaughtered by hyenas. Father Francis then relates the dark history of the church to Marin. 1,500 years earlier, two priests led an army into the region to discover the source of all evil, only for them to all die, except for one priest. Emperor Justinian then commissioned a church to be built over the cursed region to keep its existence secret. Alas, the ancient evil has been let loose and has possessed Sarah, a doctor working at the site. Marin follows Sarah into the church's catacombs and successfully exercises her, though she dies in the process. Nevertheless, Marin's faith in God has been restored, and he returns to the church. As seen in Exorcist II, The Heretic, years before the events of the first film, Father Marin traveled to Africa to study its holy men. While there, he stumbled upon a young boy named Kokumo, with psychic powers, who was called upon by locals to help ward off a swarm of locusts infesting the area. However, Marin deduces that the locusts are there because of Kokumo, who is possessed by Pazuzu. With the help of the villagers, Marin conducts an exorcism on the boy, and while it nearly kills him, he successfully drives the demon out of Kokumo. Kokumo eventually grows up to become a scientist who specializes in locusts. It's unclear, though, whether or not Marin's experiences are supposed to be the same as those depicted in Exorcist The Beginning and Dominion, prequel to The Exorcist, as they all feature a younger Marin exorcising a possessed boy in Africa. In the original Exorcist film, actress Chris McNeil has been living in Georgetown with her 12-year-old daughter, Reagan, while shooting a movie. 
After hearing unexplainable noises coming from the attic, she notices that Reagan is behaving increasingly strangely. Meanwhile, priest and Georgetown University psychiatrist Damien Karras is struggling to care for his ailing mother. He's also dealing with the loss of his faith. You are not happy. Tell me, what is the matter? Chris has Reagan examined by doctors, who subject her to a battery of tests. Unfortunately, they're all perplexed by what's happening, so they suggest an exorcism by a Catholic priest as a last resort. Chris then reaches out to Father Karras, who agrees to visit Reagan, who's now fully possessed by a demonic entity. Reagan taunts Karras with the voice of his recently deceased mother and speaks in Latin, but he's still reluctant to carry out an exorcism. Your mother's in here with his cars. Would you like to leave a message? I see that she gets it. When Karis finally commits to conducting the rite, he's assigned a more experienced partner in the form of Father Marin. The task proves to be incredibly difficult, but the two priests are able to weaken the demon's hold on Reagan, though Marin dies in the process. In one last desperate move, Karis forces the demon to leave Reagan and possess him, and then he throws himself out of a window and down a flight of stairs, dying and taking the demon with him. Four years after Reagan's possession in Georgetown, Catholic priest Philip Lamont has been assigned to investigate the peculiar death of Father Marin. Reagan is now living a normal life as a teenager, with no memory of what happened to her. However, she's also been undergoing regular examinations by Dr. Jean Tuscan, who believes that her memories of the exorcism still reside deep within the recesses of her mind. Father Lamont meets with Reagan and attempts to get her to remember the traumatic events, but to no avail. Dr. Tuscan then hooks them both up to a machine called a synchronizer, which harmonizes the brainwaves of two subjects. During this procedure, Father Lamont learns of Father Marin's previous encounter with Pazuzu during his exploration of people with special healing gifts, which includes Reagan. Father Lamont takes Reagan back to the Georgetown house where the exorcism took place, and he's beset by Pazuzu in the form of a young possessed Reagan. The priest is nearly seduced by the demon's offer of unlimited power, but he's rescued by the real Reagan who helps him kill the demon's new form as the house falls apart around them. The two leave the property, with Father Lamont vowing to watch over Reagan. In the years after they witnessed the infamous exorcism of Reagan McNeil, Father Joseph Dyer and Lieutenant William Kinderman meet regularly to exchange memories of their mutual acquaintance, Father Karras. Kinderman is deeply disturbed by a recent case of a young boy who's been brutally killed ritualistically. And that's just one of a string of gruesome murders as a priest is decapitated and Dyer himself dies by the draining of his blood. This all seems to indicate that a serial killer known as the Gemini Killer has returned, despite having been executed years earlier. The story becomes even stranger when Dr. Temple, the head of a psychiatric ward, tells Kinderman that a man was committed there following the Gemini Killer's execution and has been in a catatonic state ever since. When he finally speaks, he claims to be the Gemini Killer, Kinderman visits this mysterious patient and is shocked to discover that it's Father Karras. Who are you? I am no one. Apparently, Pazuzu wanted revenge for being forced out of Reagan's body, so it used the Gemini killer's spirit to occupy the dead priest's form. Sensing that a demonic force is at work, Father Paul Morning arrives to perform an exorcism on Father Karras. But he's nearly killed during the exorcism, leaving only Kinderman to rescue his old friend from the demonic influence. Father Morning intervenes one last time before dying, giving Kinderman the chance to euthanize Karis and finally free his soul. Season 1 of The Exorcist TV show follows a seemingly familiar plot. A woman believes that her family may be plagued by something demonic, with her daughter as the focal point. So she reaches out to an inexperienced priest for help. However, it doesn't take long before the plot reveals far more simmering beneath the surface. The show follows two vastly different priests, young and idealistic Tomas Ortega and the older and more militant Marcus Keene. The two of them investigate the strange goings-on in the Rance family household. Meanwhile, a series of bizarre murders in surrounding Chicago point to a larger menace orchestrated by a secretive elite society. It's eventually revealed that the matriarch of the Rance family, Angela, changed her identity years earlier following a traumatic episode in her childhood that she's since largely forgotten. In case it wasn't obvious by this point, Angela is actually Reagan McNeil. I reinvented myself, but it didn't matter. After her daughter Casey is possessed by Pazuzu, Angela gives herself to the demon to take her instead and leave Casey alone. 
Fathers Ortega and Keen are ultimately able to exercise the repossessed Angela slash Reagan, but she's left paralyzed from the ordeal. Keen then agrees to take Ortega under his wing and train him to become an exorcist. Following the events of The Exorcist Season 1, Season 2 sees Father Keen continuing to train Father Ortega in the ways of exorcism. After barely managing to drive a demon out of a woman named Cindy, Keen grows concerned that Ortega is taking too many risks in their missions. Meanwhile, on an island near Seattle, a man named Andrew Kim runs a home for troubled foster children and must prepare for the arrival of social worker Rose Cooper, who happens to be his ex-girlfriend. But a series of strange events occur at the home, most of which center around a young blind boy named Caleb. Ortega and Keen's journey takes them to the island, where they detect a strong demonic presence that eventually takes hold of Andrew. Father Ortega confronts the entity head-on before it can fully take Andrew's soul as Keen and Rose attempt to get the children off the island. While Ortega is ultimately successful in cornering the demon and helping in its destruction, it comes at the cost of Andrew's life. Rose adopts the remaining children from the foster home, as yet another demon takes a new host. The Exorcist TV show ended on a cliffhanger after only two seasons. Its continuity is now being erased to make way for The Exorcist Believer, which serves as a direct sequel to the original 1973 film. It's the first of a planned new trilogy, to be followed by The Exorcist Deceiver in 2025 and an as-yet-untitled third installment. The creative team behind the film includes writer-director David Gordon Green and writer-producer Danny McBride, who similarly revived the Halloween series with a new trilogy released between 2018 and 2022. We'll have to wait for the film's release to witness all the plot details, but we do know that the movie tells the story of single father Victor Fielding, whose daughter Angela and her friend Catherine go missing in the woods for several days. They're eventually found, but they've brought back a powerful, malevolent force with them as they exhibit increasingly monstrous behavior. Determined to discover what happened to Angela and Catherine, Fielding requests the help of Chris McNeil in the wake of her own daughter's possession 50 years earlier. I don't want to go to hell! 